What's up my friends, welcome back! Well, I want to build my own soldering station and for that I will use this 24 watt soldering iron with a thermocouple inside. It will also have an LCD and some sort of control in order to be able to set your temperature value and also an Arduino inside that will create the PAD algorithm. But before we do that, we first have to understand how a temperature PAD controller works. So today, we will build our own PAD controller for temperature. Here I have a commercial PAD controller, but this one is based on a relay, so it's not that precise, because it will only turn on and off on a certain range, and that will result in an oscillating value. What I want to build today is a fully PAD controller for a very precise range control. So today, we will see how to read the temperature value using a K-type thermocouple and then we will generate the PAD algorithm inside of the Arduino and apply a PWM signal to a MOSFET in order to control the power applied to a heating element. For today's project, I will use the nozzle from a 3D printer, since it already has the heating element inside, so it will be a great example in order to learn how PAD control works for temperature. So guys, let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends? Welcome back! What I want is this block to have, let's say, exactly 100 degrees. I will control the real temperature using this thermocouple. To read the data, I will use the MAX6675 module and control the PAD algorithm with an Arduino. Finally, to apply power, we will make a small circuit using a MOSFET, or maybe a triac in case of high AC voltages. This will be a closed loop. The thermocouple measures the real values. The Arduino creates the signal applied to the MOSFET and this transistor will control the power of the heating element inside of the aluminum block. And once again the thermocouple will measure the real value, that's why it is a closed loop. So, the first thing is to understand how PAD temperature controller will work. As in any PAD system, we need to define the final process. In our case, will be the finer temperature that we want to achieve. In order to control this temperature, we will need a feedback. So, any PAD control will have some sort of feedback. In our case, that feedback is made using a K-type thermocouple that will measure the real temperature of the system. This type of control will also need a set point, which in our case is the desired temperature. The system will make the difference between the desired value and the feedback from the output, and using three constants, the proportional, the integral and derivative, we can change the output according to the feedback. So, if we want the heated block to have exactly 100 degrees, what we will do first is apply power to it. This will start heating up. By the time it reaches the set point value, which in this case is 100 degrees, the feedback will inform that to the PID control, and this will start lowering the power applied to the heating element. And in our example, that will be made using a PWM signal applied to a MOSFET that will control the voltage that goes to the heating element inside of this aluminum block. So, it is obvious, if the real temperature is higher than the set point, we lower the power value. But if the real temperature is lower than the set point, well, we increase the power till it reaches the desired value. If we do just that, this is called a P-control, or proportional control and it will end up in a temperature oscillation between certain values, and it will very difficult or never be stable. For that we add a D control, or derivative. This kind of control will react to the speed of temperature change. So for example, if I blow air on the aluminum block, the derivative will fast push the power to maximum in order to keep the same temperature. Finally, we have the I, or integral. 
this will sum the error on each loop getting bigger and bigger with each loop, or in case of negative error getting lower and lower. The sum of all these parts, the P, the I and the D, makes a PAD control. It is our job to find the correct constants for each of these PAD elements. So guys, let's start building this project. The first thing that we will do is to see how to read the real temperature. This is a K-type thermocouple, and this is the MAX 6675 breakout module. This will amplify and compensate the voltage created by the thermocouple. It has an SPI communication, so we will have to connect these pins to the Arduino SPI port. Now use these connections and let's test it out. On a breadboard I connect the MAX 6675 and the thermocouple. Be careful, the thermocouple has polarity, so connect the positive to positive and negative to negative. Now connect the SPA pins to the Arduino and also supply 5 volts and ground. Now upload this next code to the Arduino Uno. You can find the code below in the description and it is called thermocouple read example code. This code will just read the SPA data from the module and that gives us the real temperature. We print the value on this LCD screen. I hit the thermocouple with a lighter and there you go, I have the real value on the LCD. By the way, this LCD screen has I2C communication, so you don't need a lot of wires, just the data pin and the clock. Ok, so now that we know how to read the real temperature, let's mount this next schematic and control the power applied to the heating element with a MOSFET. I mount the circuit on a breadboard once again, and now I upload the next code. This second code has the PID algorithm already created. We read the temperature, we calculate the error, sum the PID values and create the PWM signal on digital pin D3 that will be applied to the MOSFET. Please, read all the comments in this code in order to understand it better. Now I set the desired temperature at 100 degrees and use the LCD screen to print the set value and the real temperature. The temperature starts rising and as you can see, once reached the temperature stays at that value. But this is after trying a lot of PAD constants and that is the tricky part of this project. So what you will have to do is to try your own values till you get the correct ones. I advise you to start with the I and the D values equal to 0 and then increase those values slowly till you get good results. Now here on my oscilloscope I have the PWM signal of the MOSFET connected. At the beginning till the system reaches the desired value the pulse has a small width since I use a BJT transistor to activate the end channel gate, so the MOSFET in this case will be activated with low values. Once the set value is reached, it starts to wumble around and by that maintaining the temperature. As you can see, if I try to cool down the heating element by blowing air with this tube, the PWM signal gets lower in order to keep the same value. So the control works. Now all this system needs is some sort of control together with the LCD screen in order to view and also be able to set the desired temperature value as this commercial PAD controller has the set up and down buttons. For that I will use this rotor encoder. It has a push button integrated so I can use it to enter the set point menu and increase or decrease the value. This is the final schematic of this project. We have an LCD screen to print the values, the rotor encoder with push button inside for control, the thermocouple with the MAX 6675 module, the MOSFET and the BJT as a driver circuit that will control the power and the heating element. Make sure that the thermocouple is touching the heating element in order to know the real value. I mount everything on the breadboard and now let's test the new code, which by the way you could also download from a link below and it is called PAD temperature control code. The default value is now 0 degrees. Press the set button of the rotor encoder. Rotate the encoder in order to increase or decrease the temperature value. Now press the set button once again. And now you can set the P constant for the PAD control. 
Press it once again and select the I value. Finally, press the button again and select the D value. Now, press the button and exit the menu, and the new settings are stored. I set it once again to 100 degrees, and now as you can see the real temperature starts increasing, till it reaches the desired value, and then it stays there. When we reach the desired value, you can see the PWM signal wobbling, in order to maintain the same value. So there you go, the PAD of temperature works. I could 3D print a case for this project, just as the commercial one has. But since I will use this project for my soldering station in a future tutorial, I won't do that now. In that future project I will use this 24 watt soldering iron, with a thermocouple inside, and make my own soldering station, so stay tuned for that guys. Have in mind that today's project is only for DC power control so only DC heating elements will work. In the future I will also make a tutorial on temperature PAD control but for AC 220 volts voltage using a triac control as in my past triac tutorial. These here are 220 volts heaters and I will use this to build my own filament extruder and recycle all of my bad 3D printed parts. But that is for another future video. If my videos help you and you would like to help my projects, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always. I will really appreciate that guys, and it will help my workshop for new projects and keep this channel going. By the way, thanks to all my Patreons. I hope that you enjoyed this small tutorial on PAD control. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.